hello so welcome to another reading vlog uh today is friday and i took the day off work to just spend a day of resting i did get my second shot of the vaccine yesterday i'm mostly feeling okay maybe a little bit tired and my arm is really sore but i think i just needed a day of rest anyway so i'm spending the day doing some reading and some editing but anyway this week's reading i'm going to be focused on reading books by maori authors um these are books that i recently got from huia publishers and i also have an audiobook to read by a maori author so i'm excited to get through these these are also going to fulfill a bunch of my prompts for the magical readathon and becca's bookopoly and their books that i picked off my tbr using my own tbr machine so if i can get these books read i can like Feel a sense of achievement as well as hopefully enjoying the books. So firstly I have started just this morning reading Butcher Bird. I've only got a couple of chapters in but I'm quite enjoying it so far. So the basic setup is we've got this girl named Jenna and when she was younger her family died in a fire and then she doesn't really understand but she was sent off to live with her auntie and her uncle who didn't really want her rather than getting to stay with her grandmother on the family farm. So now she's just found out that her grandmother is really sick um, and probably going to die soon. So she's going down to this family farm to help take care of her, possibly get some inheritance, and to try and find out what happened when she was younger with this fire that killed her family. I am really liking the New Zealand feel of it already. My family also has like a, a family farm down the line in the country of New Zealand. Actually my grandparents have now passed away but the farm is still there and um, she talks a lot about how it still feels like home. The farm will always be my home even if I never go there again. That's just how it works. Another thing I'll mention about this, so Cassie Hart. I've read things by Cassie before. She was actually kind of my Twitter type friend from a long time ago before she even started publishing some books. And I wouldn't really have thought of her as a Maori author, even though I know that she does have some Maori heritage. But like me, she has white skin. So I'm also 1 16th Maori, but obviously I've got naturally blonde hair. I know you can't tell that at the moment. Uh, and blue eyes, so I don't look Maori. And generally because I don't follow the culture, I don't make a claim to being Maori. But... It is definitely a small part of why I am who I am and in some ways I kind of regret that I don't know as much about that part of my ancestry as I would like to. Unfortunately my grandfather grew up in the time where if you spoke Maori in school you would get in trouble, probably get whipped or something um, and so at that time a lot of the family's connection to that culture was lost. Um, and I know my granddad was always really self-conscious about speaking Maori because he felt like after not speaking it for so long that he wasn't very good at it. Um, so that's just really awful. Uh, and I really like that Cassie has been working on that connection to her heritage because I guess it gives me hope that maybe one day I could become more connected as well. And maybe these books will help a little bit. I'm not sure this one's going to be like massively Maori culture, but I'm hoping at least it's going to have a really good New Zealand feel as well as being kind of like horror thrillerish. The other two I have are kind of for younger kids. So firstly, I've got Falling into Rarohinga by Steph Matuku. I read another book by Steph Matuku and I really liked it. It's just quite a short middle grade about some kids falling into the underworld, I think. So I've got that as well. I've got this one. Nake me tai tai. One thing I want to work on as part of reading this is my pronunciation as well as like the whole thing is actually a children's book about a tanifa written in Maori. So I'm going to have to um, do some googling to even read this but I'm excited to perhaps increase my knowledge of Maori a little bit as I do it. Um, plus it just looks like a really beautiful book. And I always enjoy tiny fast stories. So I've got these three as well. I've got an audiobook. I think it's called The Last Guests by J.M. Pomare. I don't know much about it other than it's a thriller. And I think it's like this couple are renting out the property they have. Their holiday home is like an Airbnb, except then some of their secrets start coming out. And perhaps something horrible happens to the guests as a result. So that's another kind of scary thriller that maybe we'll go with this one a bit rather than these two children's books don't really go. Although this is The Underworld and this is Tani Fuzz. So they're all scary books in their own way. Anyway, to be honest, all that talking just kind of gave me a headache. So I'm going to um, read some more of this or maybe have a nap. 
and then we'll see where we get to. Okay, so it is much later in the day now, but I am feeling slightly better. And in the interest of not spending the whole day on the couch, I'm going to get up and do some housework. And while I do that, I'm going to listen to some of my audiobook. However, I did get 100 pages through this, and I'm really liking it. I would say I can definitely tell that it's Cassie's writing style. I've read a couple of things by her, very different, like more YA fantasy, whereas this is like horror kind of stuff. So very different, but still kind of her style, and I am enjoying it. Um, I find our main character quite relatable. There has been, however, this part introduced which is all about birds. There's some kind of magpie thing going on. Now, I am somewhat afraid of birds. I have this memory from when I was a kid of like being surrounded by swans. Like I was only like three or something and I was left holding the bread when we went to feed the swans and they were all surrounding me and desperate for bread and taller than me and while I might have been scared of birds anyway that was definitely a traumatic point in my life that I remember so I'm a bit scared about the element of birds in here and what's gonna happen as well um there's this guy will who's helping to care for her grandmother he's a bit suspicious there's something that's gone on with his mother in the past which might be related to what's happened with this girl's family also she took her boyfriend along with her to her grandmother's house and i do not trust him at all but regardless i am really enjoying this i think you can tell i'm kind of engaged in the mystery i'm gonna i think i'm gonna try and finish this tonight but right now i need to go and do some housework so i'll listen to my audiobook for a while so it is now bedtime and I want to read just a little bit before I go to sleep but I think I've decided I'm not going to read this before bed because I can just tell it's going to be way too scary. I'll probably have nightmares or I won't even be able to go to sleep because I'll be imagining people breaking into my house and killing me and like it's really windy and rainy tonight so there'll be like all these noises freaking me out. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to be that scared. So I will finish this off tomorrow. I've got about a hundred pages to go, so we're doing okay. What I am going to pick up instead is Falling into Rarohenga. This is um, like a middle grade, I'm pretty sure, so it should be really light, at least in the beginning, where hopefully it'll be set up. And I kind of feel like I'm going to fall asleep before I get too far into it, but at least I can start. I did as well listen to a little bit of my audiobook, but not really that much, because to be honest, I didn't do as much housework as I should. So, so far, all we really did is we kind of had like this prologue section where it was this guy who'd booked this like Airbnb and he was like installing cameras all through it so that then he could like sell that footage in the future when other people stayed there after him. Uh, so he's pretty dodgy. Um, as well, then we started following this couple who are struggling with money and they're considering whether they should start renting out their lake house. So probably not far enough into it really to say much yet. The only thing I will note is um, the audiobook is narrated by an Australian uh, because this is written by a Maori author in Australia. Um, so I should have expected the Australian accent but I was not expecting it and um, it's like one of those really strong Australian accents. Like much love to my Australian friends. Mostly Australian accents don't bother me but there's like that really strong Australian accent that just... Oh, I mean, to be honest, there's that really strong New Zealand accent, and I hate that too, so, um, yeah. I had to slow it down because I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't follow it with the accent it has. But that I will also continue tomorrow. Hopefully it's not going to rain like this for too long. I was hoping to go for some walks tomorrow. Hmm, looks like we might get some sun tomorrow, so fingers crossed. morning. I think I still look tired but I did actually sleep well last night and I am glad that I decided not to try and read this just before I went to sleep because I think I really would have struggled with like every noise worrying what it was. So I did enjoy this. I think it's a pretty solid supernatural thriller. Maybe could have done with like another twist or two at the end but still I thought it followed through everything pretty well and it had some really interesting elements. The only thing I would say was there was one tiny mention in here of some Maori mythology. Oh, I guess there's that other thing as well. It's very hard to talk about thriller type books without 
spoiling it. Um, but there was like this mention, and I really wish we had got more of that. I don't know. I feel like talking about thrillers is really hard to say how you felt about them without spoiling things. Um, but I liked the relationships in here. I liked that New Zealand feel. I liked the references to Taranaki, the mountain Taranaki. It's kind of just like a, a small thing that's always there, which I think since this is set in Taranaki, having Mount Taranaki always kind of there in the background is like a nice piece of what it's really like there. I know Cassie did grow up in Taranaki, so I guess she's used to having the mountain watching over her. Anyway, I don't actually know what I'm going to do now. I've got through this a lot quicker than I was expecting to. So I feel like I'm going to get through all my Maori books like in the weekend, which is good, right? But maybe this is just a weekend reading vlog now. Anyway, as well last night, I did start reading this. I only read a couple of chapters and each chapter is only like a few pages long. Basically, so far all we've got is these two twins, a boy and a girl, and I think they're both actually 16-ish. So I don't know if my claim that this is a middle grade is exactly accurate. Um, but these two twins, they don't really get along. One is very studious, the girl is very studious, and then the boy kind of gets himself in trouble. He starts a fight in the middle of this. They do seem to have some kind of twinly connection, but at the same time they're often not getting along with each other just because they're so different. Just before I fell asleep, they didn't notice that their mother was missing. Then they went into her room and this big hole opened up in the middle of the room and uh, the sister fell through the hole and so the brother has jumped in to save her. That's as far as I got. I can already tell like it's so fun and fast paced like it feels very similar to Flight of the Fantail in terms of its pacing and so I can already tell that this is going to be lots of fun. But I think I'm now going to put this aside until later tonight because I've been putting off so much housework stuff and I can't do that anymore. So what I'm going to do is go and do all the housework stuff I don't know how long I'll be able to make myself do it, but I'm going to try. And hopefully, if I listen to my audiobook, maybe I can try it for longer or at least keep going for longer. It is also a really sunny day, so I might go out for a walk as well while I listen to it. Basically, I'm just going to try and listen to as much as I can of it and then get as much shit done at the same time. We'll see how we go. Good morning. So I'm about to go out for a nice morning walk. I find it's easier to go for a walk in the morning and get like all my active time out of the way and then I can just come home and be lazy or like sit down and focus and be productive on non-active things. And while I'm on my walk I'll be able to listen to my audiobook. I didn't listen to as much as I wanted to yesterday but I did get I think about a third of the way through. Also what I will say is I've realized this book is set in New Zealand so why does everybody have an Australian accent? See, this is the problem with the Australian narrator. It doesn't make sense. Everyone in New Zealand doesn't have Australian accents. Also, I think the problem with it is that the main character, this woman, is really unlikable. Right at the beginning, she goes off and has like this one night stand affair type thing because she can't, like she's not happy with the sex she's having with her husband, but like she's not going to talk to him about it. Like, you haven't even tried to fix things with your husband and you're just going off and sleeping with other men. I'm just never a fan of books. I think especially thrillers. No, any books. I'm not a fan of books where people just spend the whole time being like, I'm so unhappy in my marriage, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Honestly, I just can't stand it. Anyway, um, other than that, I'm not minding it. These, this couple, they're keeping a lot of secrets from each other. The husband has some secrets from when he was off in the war. And they're also renting out their property on this like Airbnb type site. And there's definitely linkages in their story to this other website where people are watching cameras that have been set up in these Airbnb sites. So I'm interested to see how that's all going to go. Also, the guy that she had this one night stand from, she accidentally left her wedding ring behind. And... <laughs> He's like trying to get in touch with her and she's not very comfortable with what's going on with that. Even though like still, this is why I don't like her. She just kind of keeps like avoiding the problem, even though she clearly has to deal with it. He's got her wedding ring. Her husband's like, where's your wedding ring? So like, why are you just putting off doing something about it? You need to do something about it. You can't just keep being like, oh, I hope this goes okay and not have a plan. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to continue listening to that while I'm off on my walk. 
as well I did last night get about halfway through falling into Rara Hinger and this I'm just having a lot of fun with it's just super fun these kids have fallen into the underworld and basically they're trying to save their mother but they're having to find her first and they're like exploring all these different parts of the underworld and running into all these people and creatures that are related to Maori mythology but also just like the whole way through it doesn't take itself too seriously like uh I'll find it there's one chapter that's just like this you won't be able to see it hang on I'll take your focus off oh my god like seriously oh my god it really suits the character and it's just fun at the same time like they're both kind of dealing with the fact that their parents have separated I think their father went to prison and then both the different twins have had very different coping mechanisms with what's been going on and that's also causing a bit of conflict between them so it's dealing with like some serious topics at the same time as just being a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying it so I'm gonna try and finish this off this afternoon but yeah right now I'm gonna go for my walk I am going to go to the closest cemetery because I had decided for the Magical Readathon that I wanted to try and go places that matched the reading prompts. I'm somewhat limited at the moment because we're in lockdown so I can only go to places within walking distance but at least it does give me a different place to walk to. So I'm going to walk to the cemetery which I think will match the... Oh, I've forgotten the prompts but there's one where I need to be somewhere in solitude, somewhere haunted and also the cemetery I'm going to walk to is near a forest so I think that matches three different prompts that are the three different prompts for the books that I'm reading this weekend. This was going to be a week vlog but I have been getting through these books so fast and enjoying them so much that I think I'm going to get through them all on the weekend so that's cool. I'm scared to lose myself or to go Hello. So I went for a nice long walk. I visited the cemetery and when I was there I realized that that particular cemetery I think the only time I've ever been there was like 20 years ago when I was drunk at night one time. So I've never really looked at that cemetery before and what I discovered is that there's one side that's a little bit newer, not so bad, but the main part of the cemetery or the part that I knew about previously is actually really like old and run down it was a little bit sad to see how many graves are like broken and just sad to think about all those people's stories that are like just kind of forgotten probably but I hope at least that the ghosts enjoyed my visit because it seemed like kind of a lonely place and then as well I went for a walk through the bush uh, there's this new pathway there unfortunately there were way too many people on that path as well and it's not really wide enough for properly keeping your distance during the lockdown so I won't be going back there until things have calmed down a bit with the pandemic but anyway while I was out on my walk I did finish listening to The Last Guest. For most of my walk home it was this really action-packed part like about halfway through this thing happened and it was very intense and it kind of almost felt like the climax of the story so then it was a little bit weird that it finished and then there was part two, the aftermath. Um, and that part, I felt like it was a little bit stretched out. There were still some twists and turns in that bit, but after such like high intensity action, it felt a bit weird to just have this more like psychological mystery thing going on for a little while. And I think it tried a couple of times to have action in it, but it didn't quite live up to the, the main bit of action. So it was a little bit weird. However, I think overall the story was very well written. I'm definitely going to do my best not to think about that story at all if I ever stay at an Airbnb again. In fact, I need to not think about that book before I go to bed. In fact, 
I'm now thinking, what is the likelihood that somebody has snuck into my house and put cameras everywhere? Unlikely, but uh, that audiobook definitely makes you worry about that kind of thing. Anyway, right now I am going to film a video and then maybe I will read my Maori children's book because I kind of want to save Falling for Rarahinga for my like bedtime book again and read that before I go to sleep. And like having that there to read when I go to sleep will hopefully make me go to bed on time. But I will say, so my Maori children's book is all written in Maori. And I think you can tell by my terrible pronunciation of even the word Maori that I could do with improving my Maori. And I'm going to have to be Googling a whole bunch to even read it. But I'm excited to do it. So I guess I will hurry up and film so I can get to doing that. Hello. So it is Monday and last night I did not quite manage to finish this. I've got like less than 50 pages to go. How many? 40-ish pages to go. I am really enjoying this. Um, the two twins got separated and as a result they realized how much they missed each other and how much they appreciated each other and I really enjoyed that. And if I hadn't been so tired I definitely would have finished this. So I'm definitely going to finish this tonight. Also, what I found out today is that, in fact, this week is Maori Language Week. I didn't know that, but how convenient that I happen to be reading Maori books this week, or have just read a bunch because this is the last one I've got to finish. Oh, I should bring that other one over to talk about it. Hang on. So this one, in the end, I found the easiest way to do it was to use the, the Google Translate app and like scan the page, and it gave me much better translations than when I tried to do it my own by putting different words together. I still think my translation is not as good as it could be. However, pretty much the story is about two tiny fars who helped in the formation of Wellington as it is today. So one of them, this tough looking guy, this guy, he helped turn Wellington from a lake into a harbour by like breaking out the barrier around the fish's head. Actually, I was going to find a picture from this other book I've got. So I have this other book with all these Maui legends in it and when it was talking about the myths around Wellington, hang on I gotta, I know it's in here somewhere, oh yeah this is the picture of it. So talking about the creation myth of Maui, um, it was talking about how the North Island of New Zealand is actually like this fish that Maui fished up um, and Wellington is down here by the mouth of the fish. Um, so one of the Tanifas, the tough one, like opened the lake up into a harbour and the other one went into the throat of the fish and then when he got coughed out, he got coughed out along with these fragments which turned into like islands that are there. And I do really enjoy like mythological stories that have been created around like how did things come to be. It's always really interesting. So I really like this. The pictures are really beautiful. I do want to keep rereading it regularly and maybe see if I can get better at my translation. I just need to learn more Maori in general and I also need to work on my pronunciation. I know this um, and this is a good thing you can get out of Maori language week is that there's a lot of stuff around so you can practice. To be honest I know that I don't even say Maori right. It's meant to be more like Maori but I know if I just try to use that in a sentence I stumble over it, it every time. I stumble over a lot of words but I will keep practicing. That's the main thing, right? Is that you keep trying even when you're terrible at things. And I am really happy to own this really pretty book. Oh, one other thing I was going to say is the audiobook. You know how I was complaining about the Australian accent? Wow, my battery is about to run out. Can I finish? You know how I was complaining about the Australian accent? Well, by the time I got to the end of the audiobook, it wasn't really bothering me anymore. I just kind of got used to it. And I feel like you can get used to any accent once you get to know someone. So, I feel a bit bad being so mean about the Australian accent when like my accent sucks and my Maori accent really sucks so I'm gonna let go of the fact that that Australian accent was annoying me. I, in the end it wasn't annoying me at all. I was just being a bit precious and I think I can get over it. Okay so final update for this vlog. It is actually quite a bit later but let's pretend that it's not. So I did 
finish off this the night after I last updated you and I really enjoyed it. As expected, the whole experience was just so much fun. I really love the underworld of the story and I really would also kind of like to get more of this underworld, um, especially there's a part where they're in this city and I would love to learn more about that city. I think really I need to go and do some research about the Maori underworld and find out how much is mythology versus how much is just something that Steph Matuku made up for the story. I think as well I wasn't sure whether this is middle grade or YA but what I would say is the main characters are like 14-ish and it does use the word bitch in it but otherwise I feel like quite a young reader could read this and enjoy it but also like I'm an old lady and I enjoyed it so I think anyone could have fun with the story. And overall I think I just had a really good weekend of reading. All of these Maori authored books were really great. Um, this one's great for a younger audience or if you've got an even younger audience and you want to read a Maori children's book then this would be a good option. I think The Last Guest is probably good if you just want like a, a standard thriller and you're not planning to stay in an Airbnb anytime soon or maybe if you really like being scared you could read it while you're staying in an Airbnb. Uh, and then this one is probably good if you want like a supernatural thriller with a little bit of a, a supernatural twinge to it. Also I think if you want a book kind of set in rural New Zealand that's not something you come across very often so this one's got it for you. So overall lots of great books and I'm really glad that I decided to spend my weekend reading them. What I would love to know is if you know of any other Maori authored books that you would recommend then please leave them down in the comments. Otherwise thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're doing well and I will see you next time.